everybody. You know what this is. Jerome B. Fam Cooking. We're here again with another Beyond the Restaurant Door. And today, we brought you somebody special. Very, very special. Chef Steph. So, she's here to talk about some stuff. About herself. About food in general. And let's get into it. Why don't we? Chef Steph, how you doing? I'm good, Jerome. Thank you so much for having me. And hi out there to everyone. Well, I'm glad to see that you're doing well. So you're in you're in uh, California, correct? Is that I am. Where exactly in California are? I wasn't sure of that. San Diego, Southern San California. San Diego. I'm in Long Island, yeah. New York, uh, the other side of the planet, as I like to call yeah. it. Yeah. Um, but as you know, uh, this this food game that we play has been really really fun, and I'm I'm into it a couple of years now, and I, I see that you're into how many years you're. I saw you wrote a book and. You're doing demos and you're just you're just out there. What what's going on? Don't, tell me a little bit about your background. Well, you know, my background is I love to eat, and <laughs> I will. Um, I'll just put it right out there. I'm very transparent about this. I uh, I'm not a professionally trained chef, but I've been doing this a long time, and the whole I can cook that is literally that. Um, getting people into the kitchen, whether you're a pro or whether you're new, tips and tricks along the way, cooking things that sound super fancy. Like I can put together a duck confit um, that takes me literally four ingredients and, and 10 minutes of prep time. So like just things like that. Um, I've been doing it for a long time. I started, you know, I'm in IT during the day and I remember someone saying to me, you know, I hate turkey because it's always so dry, but your turkey is really good and you should write a book. And then I lost my contract and I thought, well, I guess I'll write that book. <laughs> <laughs> and then the rest is kind of history. It's just kind of really, you know, I've been so, so blessed and so fortunate to meet some really nice people that have given me some breaks along the way. And, and you know, here, here we are. Outstanding. Well, I met you through, you know, the uh, International uh, Sous Vide Conference. And I was like, yeah, that sounds like a person I can get to know. You know, anybody that likes duck as much as you do, two ways, duck. That's that was, <laughs> I, that's okay. So I figured I, I'd contact you and, you know, say hello, see if we can get you on the, on the, on the YouTube and talk to some people. Uh, so, you know, this, this is why I contacted you. And I'm really great, grateful that you agreed. Um, so, I'm so glad you did. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you for, for you know, uh, taking the time. Hey, you know, um, what would you say is one of your favorite influencers? Mm, well, I can tell you my very favorite influencer is uh, Chef Thomas Keller. I just, uh, he's just my culinary idol. Uh, but, you know, I mean, so many of them are, are so great. But I would have to say if I could have a you know a culinary dream with, with any chef out there it would definitely be chef keller so if you know him <laughs> keep me in mind yeah okay well uh i haven't i'm dying to go to his restaurant and you know you know one of the, the two either the one here in new york uh i believe it's per se and then the french laundry right uh mm -hmm. that is my one of my uh bucket list things speaking of bucket list uh i mean at 750 that, that he charges to get there is is pretty it's pretty pricey, but I'm willing to pay it. Whatever it, it costs, you know, this is a wax on moment. You got you got to make mm -hmm. it to a spot that uh, that actually believes in and what they preach. And Chef uh, Thomas Keller is is outstanding. I have the books. I've uh, seen him on master class. I've taken all those little master classes. Uh, I've done some online classes with him. But uh, have, have you indulged in the online classes or anything like that? I haven't been to online classes, but uh, we did a lot of his master classes. And my husband, who, you know, has really come a long way in the kitchen when I first met him, like it was eggs and that was it. And, um, but we watched the one on uh, marinara sauce and just the simple act of the blanching of the tomatoes. And like, he's in charge of marinara sauce now in this house. Like, what I love about Thomas Keller is not only is his food like, oh my God, but the way he explains it, he's so down to earth and he just breaks things down in a fashion to me where I think, you know, even if you've never been in the kitchen, he can teach you how to do it. Where do you find your, your love of food comes from? Is that, is it a, a family thing, a heritage, or you just like it because it tastes good? Or <laughs> what? <laughs> 
Uh, well, my dad did own a restaurant when I was a kid. Uh, and so, you know, instead of playing Barbies, I was playing waitress, you know? <laughs> I mean, I remember being a kid and I was like five years old. And if you wanted to get into my room, you had to pay like $5 cover and you could see the menu. So, <laughs> you know, um, and I was always just really, I always thought it was really cool. Um, and I remember like, he'd let me play with the, like do the soda machine and stuff when I was a kid. And then when I got older, I just had this love of food and it just kept snowballing. So what type of restaurant was it? Was it uh, Italian? It was, it was Italian. Yeah. And this was in <laughs> St. Louis, Missouri, where I'm from, where it's a huge foodie town. Outstanding. I, I have not been to St. Louis yet, but uh, I'll, I'll have to check that out also. Um, oh yeah. So the, the family, you're, you're so you're born and bred Italian. Is that is that correct? I'm guessing you're. No, I'm just a Jewish girl from St. Louis. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I know St. Louis is also a big steak steak town too. Is that is that yeah. true? Yeah, yeah, I mean St. Louis is like an everything town. It's crazy. Um, it's I, I tell everyone it's like the biggest little city. So I mean they have the hill. They have um and it's you know we're just like and i'm talking real italian like you know they're getting up and making the pasta and the whole thing and then they have these basement bars that are they're really known for like live music and really just legit burgers and then you have steak houses and it's just if there's anything you want from a deli to authentic italian to the best burger it's there weather sucks but the food's good <laughs> the weather sucks with the food skin. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> so you threw me off track there for a second. I was like, what? Sorry. Uh, so a uh, large family, not a large family. It's just, just, you said dad, but you didn't specify anything else. Yeah. I got a brother and my dad is now passed. My mom's still, Sorry. my mom's still in St. Louis, but yeah, not a big family. Um, and I was kind of the only one that said, I can't take the weather. I'm, I'm going West and here I am. So the book, tell me, tell me how you got into writing the book. I know you said that you got laid off or, or you lost your contract and, and then yeah. you decided to write a book. Yeah. And I, yeah, I decided to write a book and stuff on the bucket list. Like, honestly, it, you know, 20 years later, I, I look at it and it, it kind of looks like something that a 13 year old did, but, <laughs> but you know, it was my, uh, it was my starter book and it was fun. And, uh, I am going to be writing another one here, uh, soon if I can find the time to do it. But yeah, it just, so, it just was something I wanted to check off. Cool. What, what's the title? You know, you never mentioned the title. Um, Oh, I can click that. <laughs> Simple. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, that's the title of the book. I can click that. <laughs> All right. Uh, all right. So I, I got another question for you. Uh, four things that you might not, that someone might not know about you that you always wanted to, you know, to get it out there. Four things. Oh, my gosh. Uh, one of the reasons that I got into cooking was I was weighing more than I wanted to weigh. And I knew dieting wasn't realistic. I knew that um, eating frozen lean cuisines would drive me to an early grave. So I think a lot of how I can cook that was born was I wanted to learn how to make really good tasting food without following a quote unquote diet. So I guess that's one thing. Um, I don't like feta. I don't think it's a real cheese. I think it's, I don't know what it is. I think it's like an imitation dried out cottage cheese. Uh, let's see, two other things people should know about me. I'm a geek by day, a uh, self-taught IT nerd. I help people get into the cloud. And the fourth thing, cannot believe I'm gonna be 51. <laughs> Congratulations. Welcome to the fifties club. I'm already there myself. So, <laughs> you know, this, it's not as bad as you think. Don't worry. Don't, right. don't worry. <laughs> so, um, um, now that we, we've talked about you being a geek and I'm a geek and literally that's one of my uh, email addresses, <laughs> look for a geek. Mm -hmm. Jerome, right. Uh, mm -hmm. the, it's okay to be uh, technically sound. We are technically uh, cooking, right? We are big sous vide people, uh, myself and yourself. 
Um, what would you say is one of your favorite sous vide recipes? Well, the duck really uh, is is something that I absolutely love because I think it's one of those wow dishes that really I've spent more time cooking a burger, making sure like at that perfect medium rare or you know whatever it is than that. And you serve someone that, and they just think, oh my gosh, you know, like. But it's really really easy. So I would say that. And then um, I do a lot of sous vide tacos, which. Uh, people seem to be surprised about, but I have a, a 10, I think it's 10 ingredient Asian marinade that I always keep in my fridge as I make it in batches. And um, I do an Asian flank or an Asian taco that I use that marinade for. It's a super quick sous vide. It's 40 minutes basically. And then a quick sear, whether it's under the broiler or the grill. And it's, it's different. A nice go to. Uh, you serve that with a little uh, hoisin sour cream, which you saw in the uh, sous vide demo, and you're good to go. So I think that's those are my two favorite sous vide. But I do a lot of stuffed chicken too, a lot of whimsical um, takes on, like, you know, if you've had baked brie with a jalapeno jelly, I'll do a stuffed chicken with brie. Um, and then one of my, my partners, uh, Brian Lee, BT Lee's, he's got this wonderful, uh, small batch sauce called jalapeno business. And I'll put that on there. And it's kind of like, I like doing these whimsical spins on things. Cool. If there was one device you can do without in your kitchen, what would it be? Uh, asking a hard one, asking a hard one. Really? <laughs> one device I could do without, let me think food processor i don't really use a food processor me neither I, I i we have one but i rarely take it out it seems like it's more difficult to clean exactly i have one that's like a three cup that i'll do for when i make my pesto um but because you you literally can't do pesto any other way but it's like i never use a food processor other than that i do if i was going to do a pesto i'd put it in a blender <laughs> yeah. Bolts it. Boop, 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 mm. done. <laughs> and it's yeah. one vessel to clean and that that's you know the blades yeah. are very self-cleaning. Vitamix is the way to go. Um right. so so you you're a heavy tech person. Uh, so that means it that means that you're not afraid of gadgets. You know, there nope. are lots of things that, that people should have. Could you give me two instances of, of something they they probably should have in their kitchen if they you know had a chance to get one? Ah. Uh, Hint, sous vide. <laughs> <laughs> well, definitely sous vide. Um, and then I would say one, at least one, expensive piece of culinary cookware. And I know there's a lot of good cookware out there that is not expensive, and that's that's okay too. I mean, ninety percent of your kitchen can be that. But I mean, I think um, I again a huge Heston fan, Thomas Keller, you know Heston. Um, I'm actually an affiliate for them as well. Um, they are pricey, but I'm telling you, they're nanobon line. First of all, it's a lifetime guarantee. So all these cheap pots and pans that you're replacing every couple of years outside of your cast iron, I guess cast iron would be the second one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now that I'm talking through it, but um, I would say one really good, solid piece of cookware that is not your cast iron. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, so I got, I got more questions here. Uh, I'm if here. there was a sandwich named after you, what would be on it? Uh, egg blood. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, say that again? <laughs> sorry, that's my own, that's my own, my little hashtag thing that I do. Um, so, you know, when you get that perfectly beautiful, either over easy or sunny side up egg and you smash it and all the beautiful egg yolk runs down. So I call that egg blood. Egg blood. Okay. Yes. And man, it's my favorite movie. I could just watch that all day long. So if there was going to be something on my sandwich, it would definitely be an egg. So, okay. So egg blood on you. So, so it would be uh, <laughs> chef Steph. Egg blood sandwich. <laughs> okay. I mean, you can put something else on there. Like you can put a burger or steak or, you know, anything else. But, but I mean, if it was going to be like trademarked by me, you got to have the egg blood. Okay. 
right. That's, uh, however you want it. I think that the, that's close to a French burger. I think that's what they call it. A, a yeah. fried egg with a, a burger on it. So maybe we do a steak. Would you? I mean, or, you know, from, prosciutto yeah. with some Swiss and an, and oh, an egg. Now we're or, talking. Now we're talking a yeah. sandwich. <laughs> yeah. Or, or croque madame or, you know, like. Um, I do, lo I love the French food. I love all food, I mean, let's be honest. But um, the French food, like, oh man, the um, the prosciutto or, you know, any type of, um, you know, anything the French makes is great. And you put a little uh, Emmental and an egg, you won't see me for days. <laughs> well, you know, I didn't want to take up much of your time. This is really what it was supposed to be about. Um, you know, we get in there, we talk, we learn a little bit about, about each other, and we share information. So uh, do you have any questions that you want to, or anything that's coming up that we should know about about for you? Uh, well, I'm starting to do some Zoom uh, sous vide classes. So if, uh, if there's any interest in that, I'd love to, uh, I'd love to meet you, whoever you are. Um, Where will we find that at? Uh, that'll be posted on my website, I can cook that .com. Um, And if you do Google the website, make sure you go to the I can cook that .com. There's some there's some other uh, people that have kind of decided they really like the name. So um, I am the original. <laughs> I'll put that out there. Lots of fun stuff. Uh, for the last six months, I've been doing a um, international, uh, think of it as an interactive podcast. It's something, it's called Spoon Radio. So there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of those sessions that you can download. Just pretty much everything and anything. I'm going to be, um, I'm a brand ambassador for Pit Boss Grills. So they have some really fun grilling contests coming up, wrapping up the summer. So wish me luck on that but my question for you is what is your favorite food to eat and to make favorite food i don't know uh, i think caviar is the, the my favorite food if you want to get, get yeah yes i, I like, with I like you. that we could put much. that on the sandwich too yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh to to make wow what is my favorite food uh i guess it would depend on on what um whether it's sweet or savory uh, if it was sweet, I guess, uh, why don't we go with some one of the cakes or something that, that I've made before. Uh, but I think creme brulee would probably be the, the easiest thing to, to remember. Um, I nice. love creme brulee. I make it all the time when people come over. Nice. It's an end thing. I do different versions thereof. Chocolate with strawberries or chocolate with homemade marshmallows. You know, um, I've made coffee creme brulee with uh, some some uh, special uh, coffee from a friend of mine who is... Uh, and in Atlanta, right? Uh, you know, I have vanilla, lemon, strawberry. I, I've made them all. You know, the just, coffee uh, one sounds delicious. Oh, it is, it is pretty fantastic. Think of cold brew with with a uh, with a little bit of cream in it. It's, it's sort of like that. Nice, Works very really nice. Well. That but, sounds um, delicious. Yes, it it's, it's works out very very nicely. All you have to do is just remember to strain the coffee off. You know, you literally <laughs> put the beans in when you're making the custard before you bake it. And then when you're getting ready to put it in to, to bake, you uh, strain off all of, of the coffee uh, itself so that you don't get that woody, woodiness mm -hmm. and crunch that you don't want. And do you do a lot of sous vide yourself? Oh yeah, I cook a lot of proteins. I've cooked everything in, in sous vide. I don't, I, except for cakes. I don't, I have no plan on cooking cakes <laughs> in sous vide. You I've done some it. sauces. Huh? You can do it. Yeah, I just don't see. It. I, that's, it's crazy. That, yeah, I don't see why you'd want to do that. I, that sounds <laughs> that sounds great, but uh, I saw the demo on on the cake and, and the thing, and yes, you can make anything into me, but why? <laughs> yeah, that's what an oven's for. <laughs> I think they would say, "Why not?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, you could also add inject a little bit of steam into your oven and make the mm -hmm. cake rise just beautifully. Uh, make it light and airy. You can do the same thing with Suvi, but I'm I'm also not that huge a chocolate fan. So that a lot of I noticed a lot of her chocolate, or a lot of her cakes are chocolate that she talks about. So right, right, yeah. Do you do any grilling and smoking and all that? Yeah, I stuff? have. A, I do grilling. I do smoking. I have a smoke gun. I have a, a bunch of other little fun fun tools. I'm a nerd at heart, and I'm a, a software developer. So. Just a little bit of a geek plus a little bit of uh, electronics background 
That's what my nice. actual uh, previous job is. So nice. you know, this, these are the things that I do, but um, yeah. Yeah. So I got into cooking with my, my wife. Uh, you know, she, she has a little cooking channel also, oh, diet slash cooking slash whatever. But uh, you know, this, these are things that we do. <laughs> Wonderful. Sounds fun. Well, uh, if there's nothing, if, if there's nothing else that's going on with you, I would love to to get more information. You can send it over. I'll attach it at the bottom so everybody can see and get access. I'll make sure to include your your link. But I'd love to thank you once again for taking this time and hanging out with me um, to for this interview. Thank you. I really appreciate it. No problem. Hey, I'm Jerome, and that's Chef Stephanie. Check us out. Be fam cooking. <laughs>